In the previous video, we studied this so-called springy pendulum. It has dynamics a little more interesting than the typical standard pendulum. If we look at the forces acting on the pendulum, we see a weight and a spring force, and quite conveniently, the weight and spring force are both conservative forces, making this system a conservative system. So therefore, when I take its kinetic energy, and the potential energy to the gravity, and the potential energy to that spring force, if I add those three things together, I get this red bar right here, and it's a constant, right? So energy, total energy, which is the sum of these three energies right here, is constant. Now what I'd like to do is introduce you to a mechanism called a damper. A damper is something you'll see a lot in your vibrations course, but this is a good place to look at it. If we do a Google search for damper, we see, we see what? It gives us a lot of bread for some reason. I'm not sure what the damper for a bread is. Damper is also something that you can put in a duct to control the flow of fluid or air through a duct. But that's not what I'm thinking about. Oh, I'm thinking about something more like this. Ooh, I'm thinking something more like this. Yeah, so you might call this thing a shock absorber. Right, something you might see on your on your car or on a motorcycle or even a bicycle. It has two ends that are fastened to the end of something that could be moving. And it's got one piece that slides inside of another piece. Let's me, let me see if I can find another nice picture of this. Ah, here's a good picture. So this would be the damper or a shock absorber on an automobile. And it has a sort of cutaway view here where a piston slides inside a cylinder and the cylinder could be filled with a viscous fluid like an oil or something like that. So when the, when the, when the two ends of the, of the damper either separate or come together, fluid gets pushed through those holes and it creates a force that opposes the motion. So let's go back to this free body diagram. We have the spring force. The spring force, you recall, is proportional to the amount of, of stretch in the spring. And if the spring is stretched out, in other words, if this delta is positive, then uh, the spring force is going to be radially inward. Now I can write this stretch as L minus L0, where L is the length of the spring. And L0, remember, is the natural length of the spring. This is the spring. This is the length at which the spring sits if there's no forces pulling it or, or squashing it. Now, if I were to put a damping force into the system as well, let me just try to squeeze it in here. I would write that damping force, call it FD. Unlike the spring, remember the spring is, is proportional to how much the spring is stretched, right? The damper opposes motion. And if it's again, if it's dominated by this viscous shear, it's going to be proportional to uh, the rate at which the spring is stretched, or the rate at which this, these two ends of the damper are separating from each other. So if delta dot is positive, that means this, the, the thing is stretching out, then my force is going to oppose that motion and go in the minus e hat r direction. Oops, and I just realized I should not be calling this k. k is a spring force. So here we're going to have some sort of damping coefficient, I'm going to, or damping constant, I'll call it C. And then if I want to write it in terms of length, I can do so, like so, I'll find that the damping force is proportional to the time derivative of the length. So now let me ask you a question. It's going to be the same question I asked about the spring in the previous video. Before you recall, I asked if the spring is doing positive work or negative work. Yeah, go back and review that if, if you're curious. Um, but here I want to ask if the damper is doing positive work or negative work, or I guess the other option is zero work. So I want you to pause the video and take a moment to think about this. All right, let's work through this. So let's suppose that the that the damper and the spring is elongating. And what do I mean by elongating? Elongating means getting longer. So if the damper is elongated, that means this mass here, I'll redraw it over here, is moving outward, right? In this direction, dr. Dr here is my incremental change in position. It's the thing that appears in the, in the work integral. 
So if the spring is getting longer, then the damping force opposes that motion, right? So the so the so the damping vector would go the opposite direction. So we get therefore we get the f the damping force dot dr, and this is the thing we're integrating again in the work integral formula. This is going to be negative, right? So it's going to do negative work if we're elongating. So what happens if the spring is going the other way? What if it's instead of elongating? What if it's uh, shortengating? <laughs> yeah, maybe just getting shorter. In this case, the uh, the mass is going towards the center, so dr would be this away. But again, the damper opposes this motion, right? If it's getting shorter, then the damper is going to try to push it outward. So again, the F, the damping force and the dr are going to be in opposite directions. And therefore their dot product, this thing that appears in the integrand of work, this is also going to be negative. It's negative in both cases, whether it's getting shorter or longer, which makes the work done by the damper negative. It's always negative. As long as it's moving, it's going to be negative. Ah, interesting. All right, so let's go back to the original springy pendulum. Here I do not have the damper in there, and we see these three forms of energy all adding up to the constant. Energy is conserved in this system right here. Now what I'm going to do in a moment, this is the, this is the magic of simulations. You can just instantaneously put a damper in there if you want. So in, the, in a moment, I'm going to put a damper in there instantaneously, and I'll do it twice. The first time we do it, I want you to be looking at the, the mechanical system here, the spring and the mass and the and, uh, and gravity, and just observe this bouncing going on. And I'll do it in five, four, three, two, one. Here goes the damper. I just put it in. And ooh, what do you notice? What do you notice? This thing is still swinging back and forth, right? Left and right. The damper does not apply any forces along, along this arc here, the circular, circular-like arc that the that the the mass is falling along, right? The damper only works radially, right? And you'll notice that it very quickly got rid of the oscillations. Didn't get rid of the swinging, but got rid of or much of the oscillation. You can see it's sort of elongating a little bit, shortening a little bit. Uh, so you can see the damper doing its effort that way, getting rid of those the bounces again, but not the not the swinging. All right, so now I've restarted my simulation. I want to look at it again, okay? But this time, instead of looking at the, or at least focusing your attention on the mechanical part, I want you to look at these energies, all right? Check out the energies when I turn on the damping. All right, three, two, one, go. Here, I put the damping in, and ooh, look at that red bar. Look at that red bar, it's shrinking. It's, these, these energies are not adding up to a constant anymore, it's shrinking. It's going away, oh, it's going negative even now. Right, every time I get one of these little bounces from the, in the, in the, in the spring potential, right, there goes the blue again, it sucks out energy. These are these radial displacements There's that, that the damping is just uh, sucking energy out of my system. When I say system, I just mean the mass itself. It's taking, taking kinetic energy out of the mass and depositing that, inf that energy elsewhere. If it was a physical system, it would be primarily heat energy being formed. But you see, you see the effort of that damper. In fact, that's why you put these dampers on automobile suspensions and motorcycle and bicycle suspensions, right? You want... You don't want your car or your motorcycle or your bicycle bouncing like this, right? <laughs> when you're driving a vehicle, you want to get rid of those oscillations. And that's, that's, of course, what the dampers do. And, of course, you'll be seeing that a lot more in your vibrations course. But anyway, in this case, kind of cool. Put the damper in again real quick. Just one last look. There it is.